It is time, welcome to Bob's Barn Workshop by the way. Today it is time to turn these uh, one by four by eights and tens, which are actually three and a half inches, into knotty pine tongue and groove uh, panel members for the backs of my cabinetry at the lake and the, uh, the ends of the cabinetry. I haven't started the doors. This is just for the, you know, the cover panels on the exposed ends. I have done a ter determination by dividing the length of the cabinet by the width of the board to find out how many pieces of this I need to cut at the specific length for the height of the cabinets. And the back is 34 and 3 8 inches high, if you see my notes from the lake. And the back is 88 and a half and the end is 22 and a quarter. I figured that out and I actually need 36 pieces of this cut to 34 and 3 8 to start making my tongue and groove panels using this bit over here. So I have set this up. I might as well do that part first. Uh, the tongue part of the, the groove, you know, uh, eats up three-eighths of an inch. So I will have boards that are three and an eighth. So that's what I did. did. I didn't do three and uh, 0.5. I did 3.125 to figure out the widths that I need. So I had to compensate for what width I'm going to lose by cutting the tongue and groove into the edge of each of the boards. So we, we're just going to set this up with a stop block. We're going to cut 36 of those suckers. All right, let me get set up. A little noisy, but uh, you can see what's going on here. I got my stop block set up at 34 and 3 eighths, which I measured by setting my ruler out and measured across against the tooth and out. It came out exact. I'm just cutting the 10 footers because I get the least amount of weight. are different. This is going to be the back paneling for the uh, long lower cabinets that come out between the kitchen and, and the living room and the end of that, the short end. So they're all a specific length cut with a stop block. These uh, here are the ones I cut to uh, cover the end of the snack bar or the breakfast bar. These ones here are for the lower cabinet beside the refrigerator and these are the ones I'm going to have to put together and cut a groove in for my sliding door uh, drawer slides so the door slides perfectly smooth and then there's the upper cabinet and that's on the behind the swinging door at the front of the upper cabinets so that's only 11 and a quarter inches wide so there's the panels that I need to make to get this buttoned up so we can get this finished finished with polyurethane, I mean. Of course, I've got to run all of these through my router bit station now and cut 
tongues and grooves on each edge. Some of them I'm going to have to leave one edge square and I have to think about that. Uh, if I accidentally put a tongue edge on one of them, I can always just run it through the table saw and knife it off. So that's not a big deal. Um, and I guess if I put a groove on the butt edge and it goes up against something, it doesn't matter either. So I'm just going to run it on everything right now. So I've got to set that up with uh, my homemade fence here. I'm trying not to bang this around too much because I know I do. And I probably have to take off my stop block here, so I'm going to move this. This doesn't get in the way to cut things to length. I've got my own homemade fingerboards here that I will put on the top to hold it down so in case there's any bows, and one in the track to hold it in so it'll stay tight for a bit. And so I'm going to get that all set up. I have the bit in there that I cut the last set of grooves in, and this is my setup jig. And so this is what I'm going with for the setup jig. I do have dust collection for the whole rig right here. It, uh, I just have to take it off the upper. It actually, I built this uh, box around my router in the bottom and I have a two and a half inch hose that goes up to a Y that comes into the four inch here and a two and a half into the back of this which is cut out around the router bit. So, let's get to setting that up and uh, see how that works out. Now, this wood is too thin to ride on the router bearing. But what I do is, is I set it back to the bearing until it touches. And that should be absolutely perfect for depth. So, using a straight edge, aka a good piece of wood, I'm going to set that up. Nice stout fence that I made with a dust collector on the back. There's the uh, opposing bit for the other mating tongue and groove. That makes the actual tongue, so that's a much bigger bit because it has to cut away 3 eighths of an inch. All right, I got my variac set for 70%. We'll see if that's uh, good enough. I don't want to go fast and these. So this is the first shot of the first piece of wood. Wish me luck. watched all that. Well, uh, you can see I finished all the groove cuts on all my wood. Um, so next we move on to the tongue cut which I have to change the router bits to this size guy. These run through upside down and I have to match this to that. And I can do it two ways. I have my test cut here. And I 
tested it right at that point. The problem is, is this is short and it might bow up and down versus the, the wood. So I'm going to have to run a test setup after I put this in. So we'll do that. I think we're going to take a short break. Just and run and we'll come back down right here beside you. But uh, it's going to shut off soon. What I'm doing today is I'm going to start on the tongue part of milling these pieces of wood. But what I did first is I left the setup the same and I ran a test piece and I'm calling it setup what I can compare to this and when I ever have to go back I can use this to set the old bit up so I've got the new router bit in here one of the drawbacks is it shouldn't make any difference because I had to take the uh, key plate out because this bit is so big so what I gotta do now is I have to look at my setup and I need to drop this until it's Okay, I have to center it on that groove, okay, so I'm a little bit Fence. low right now. up and down a little bit but so does the wood. The front is perfectly flush. Okay buddy, we're gonna mill them all. We're gonna mill them all. You don't really want to watch me do them all. I'll show you when I get to the end. And just another thing I want to make note of, I put an X on the back of the side that was up on every piece so that I didn't accidentally put the tongue uh, and chamfer on the wrong side. Always helpful to do that right. So, uh, yeah, so the groove wants to go out, chamfer wants to go down when you're going uh, the second time through. So that's how I line my boards up over here on this chair. I go from this chair to that chair. All right, I'm going to do a few more. I'm going to run my last batch of uh, edges here, and I want to show you that uh, my technique, and I will give you a quick demonstration right now. You'll notice that... I'm pushing in on the board and down, and then with my rear hand, I'm pushing down, but I've got my thumb against it, so I'm keeping it inward and downward, so if there's any warp, it keeps it flat, and I'm trying to push the bow, which you can't push the bow out of these boards that much, but as I push it through, and of course you're watching that blade all the time, and then when I get to the end, the board's going to come off the edge of the, the hole here, and if there's any arch in this, it's going to drop in. So what I've been trying to do is press the board against the fence right here as it comes out and just press down. And now I want to explain something that uh, what I should have done, I see I'm using just the factory edges of this uh, 1x4 number 2 pine from the lumber yard. And it's rarely if seldom ever straight. So if I wanted to eliminate any bowing in my cuts or any of the little snipes at the end as I was showing you where they come off the bearing what I should have done is cut each board and then run each edge across my joiner to make this edge perfectly straight and then of course this cut would have been perfectly straight why didn't I do that? well I have a crap ton of uh, mill work to do and make. That would have added a lot of time and labor and I have a short schedule. And it's supposed to be rustic and I'm thinking it'll be just fine. Okay, so we're starting on the glue ups. And this is going to be for the cabinet on the lower end that has um, that 
the sliding door in it. So I want to get this one done because I'm going to have to machine on this one. So what I'm starting here is I've already done one and it works pretty good. They're tight. I'll tell you they're tight. But what I've been doing is I've been putting a bead, kind of running it down the back of the groove because I want it, if there's any squeeze out, I want it to be, you know, out the back, not out the front. And I'll tell you what, these joints are tight, so this makes it a little difficult to get these dogs to go together. Together. The best way to do it is just to crank them together. So, down tight. They're going reluctantly. But there they go. See, it's squeezing glue out too. That's another reason it's sticking. Boy, that's down straight though. They don't seem to be bowing. What do you think? Sand that with the palm sander and uh, put the old polyurethane tour and ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-bing. -ba 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 Let me get my other one. I think I got another five footer here. We're just gonna glue up a bunch of panels like this. And uh, so we can piece them together. We're going to be screwing them from inside the cabinets through into the back in sections. I think I might have to sand these sections or I'm going to have to get a driver block. That's all I'll do. I'll just drive them together with a block. And then uh, each section will have, this one will probably have three screws in it. Every fourth board or so. From the back inside the cabinet, inch and a quarters. Boom, boom, boom. So this is my uh, 22 and a half inch wide end panel for the peninsula part of the cabinetry. And I just wanted to talk to you about make sure when you do wide glue-ups like this, whether it's edge, to edge boards or tongue and groove or whatever, that you put opposing clamps. Because if you put just two on this, if you put so much tension, all of a sudden it'll just go pop and it'll fly up in the air and you'll have a broken tongues and all that kind of stuff. And ask me how I know. So uh, that's gluing up nice and straight. What I need to do now is I'm going to cut equal amounts off each end of this to make it 22 and a half, and I'll do that as soon as it's glued up and hardened. We are coming right down to the wire. Here's uh, the next four-piece panel. This is all the last one I did. Um, I always joke around and say I made a brew up screw up, a blew up screw up. I don't think I made any. Alright. There's another one finished. So we'll stack them on the stairs. I might end up doing these together. Alright, well you can see as we pan around the shop. I just finished four more sections of four. The others are over here on the stairs. Um, ready for finishing tomorrow. We're going to start finishing. Again, here's the eight piece for the end of the peninsula. 
there's a four piece, there's a four piece, there's a four piece, and there's the four piece for the peninsula, the side of the peninsula. There's the uh, seven piece for the cabinet with the sliding door. There's the two pieces that are five wide, 16 inches for the uh, island. Yay!